You don't have to be great to start. You have to start to be great. It's time to start the great event. Anointed to serve the poor through education. A very good morning to one and all. The President of the ABE, His Grace, Archbishop Philip Neri Farrow. The first one is to become aware of the poor in our schools. They are there. Become aware of them. The second one, understand the needs of the poor. They are not the same. The third, share that mission, that vision with the teachers, with the alumni, with the parents, with the students too. And the fifth one, transform our schools from a culture of poverty where some of the students are coming from, from a culture of poverty to a culture of success. First lesson, become aware of the poor. Catholic social teaching calls us to pay special attention to the poor in society. We are called to follow Jesus' example. Jesus who sought out those who were the last, the least, the lost. He defended, he promoted the dignity of the poor and the vulnerable in society. What about us in, here in Goa? There is a tremendous gap between the rich and the poor. Bishop mentioned that. Different kinds of poverty that we have. There is generational poverty. Those who have no land, no rich parents, no influence. There is working class poverty. Those who live from salary to salary, paycheck to paycheck. There is immigration poverty in Goa. Those who have come from outside. Language and cultural barriers. And there is situational poverty. You may have money, but then broken families, a divorce, or there is a health crisis in the family and all your savings are gone. What happens to these children? These um, young students from Mapsa, St. Xavier's, put up this little theme song and that they, gave, they said in one of those lines, if you were paying attention, there are many forms of poverty. And they showed it's not necessarily only those whom we think are financially poor. And Father Ramiro has rightly pointed out in the song he has composed, just like Pope Benedict XVI points out, there are other forms of poverty. And these are Pope Benedict's the words in his letter, Caritatis in Veritate. Let me read. One of the deepest forms of poverty a person can experience is isolation. Other kinds of poverty, including the above mentioned material forms, are born from isolation, from not being loved or even being able to love. There are some of us in society, as they depicted, we want to exclude others. I, me, myself. And Pope Benedict says, unless we believe that we are one family, we will never learn to take care of others. Lesson number two, understand the needs of the poor. For me, I was focused on the school. I wanted good results. I wanted good discipline. I wanted people to speak well of the school. I was looking at it from my perspective, not from the perspective of this little boy, Johnson. I did not take the trouble to pause for a few moments to ask him about his background, to come to know him. Thankfully, the teacher knew about his background. Don't we do this sometimes? Headmasters especially, teachers. We want 100% results. And what happens when we don't get 100% results? Who are the people we shout at? We forget all those who have done well. We forget to console the ones who have done uh, weakly, poorly. We scold them severely. The poor children who have failed, we call them failures, they are already depressed by their results and they become even more sad because their teachers and their heads, heads of the institutions, are also punishing them. 
This is very sad. How do we learn to understand them? The ones who are weak, the ones who need love, the ones who have done badly, the ones who are poor in so many senses of the word. They need extra love, extra care, better education. It was rightly pointed out in that song. Can you tell me uh, the, one of the refrains, one of the uh, phrases that was repeated again and again in the theme song? Education is? Anyone? Come on. Did you pick up something that you liked from the theme song? Anybody here singing? They were not here singing. Education is the key. Education is the key. And research has proven that education can break the cycle of poverty. In 1967, Pope Paul VI, in his letter, Popularum Progressio, he spoke about education as the first and most basic tool for personal enrichment and social integration. It is society's most valuable tool for furthering development and economic progress. 1967. 20 years later, 20th anniversary of this letter, this encyclical, Pope St. John Paul II, he reiterated the same message. Unless we educate, unless we take care of the downtrodden, there will continue to be unemployment and underemployment in immense numbers around the world. And we know what's happening even in this country. When we have big numbers of unemployment, the government shuts down that data. More than 6.5%. I don't think they count the women and others. Lesson number three. Share that vision with your teachers, with the students, with the parents, with the alumni, your stakeholders. Luckily for me, in that school, that teacher was aware of a number of things. She had the courage to come and correct me when I was scolding a student who did not need to be scolded at that moment. This teacher was aware. She was aware of many things. First, every child is created in the image and likeness of God. Even the ones who have come shabby to school, even the ones whose noses are dripping, even the ones who are fighting with each other, created in the image and likeness of God, and therefore worthy of our love. Archbishop mentioned, we looked at the total human person. The teacher was aware we had a preferential option for the poor. And she was reminding me to practice that option. She was aware it was her duty to teach other children. They were in a Catholic school, not merely to become successful, to have a nice bungalow, to have luxurious cars. Sorry. They were there to become men and women for others. They were there to live meaningful lives so that they could contribute positively to society. She was also aware she owned the mission. The mission did not belong to padres and madres. There were all of them in it. That they held a stake in that school. She owned the mission. It was so easy to run away immediately when the bell rang. But many teachers, many of you present, Choose to stay back after school. There are many who need your presence. There are many who need your love and affection. And you make that sacrifice. You own the mission. And lastly, she was also aware to give feedback loops. She was aware she could, she could give feedback to me. She could give feedback to others. Teachers were able to assess and evaluate each other. We can also listen to feedback from students who are wonderful people to tell us, are we going in the right direction? Or perhaps we need to correct our direction. Let's listen to those feedback loops. And finally, lesson number four. To help the poor, help them to transform from a culture of poverty, which they're coming from at home usually, to a culture of success in the school. Since Johnson, that little boy, had such a tough home environment, the teachers took extra care of it. They were able to help him to become self-disciplined, to study well, to dream big dreams, to have hope. They gave that to him. And he blossomed. 
he listened. It doesn't always happen. You will have many cases where you work very hard. The results are not in our hands. We can only try our very best. Johnson did well, luckily. Many others have also done well. Pope Francis tells us, he challenges us very often. He says, we should be a poor church for the poor. We are here this morning for yet another annual celebration of the All Goa Catholic Educational Institutions Day. And I'm extremely happy, glad to be with you to celebrate and to reflect together on the great mission that we have all undertaken in forming the minds and the characters of those who will soon replace us in building the human family in the state of Goa and in taking it to new heights. We also honor on this occasion those members of the teaching and non-teaching staff in our institutions who have completed 30 or more years of dedicated service to the cause of education. This is our way of telling them that not only the Archdiocesan Board of Education, but the whole society and the church in Goa are grateful to them. Yes, as people actively engaged in the education of the young, we are on a mission that responds to the aspirations of every nation, that is, to develop a society that is ever respectful of each person's dignity and that is increasingly oriented towards the welfare and the integral development of its citizens. Educators exercise, therefore, a pivotal role in shaping the minds and the hearts of those who will one day take their rightful place in developing such a society. The Church is proud to be an important stakeholder and collaborator in this whole process. In fact, this is a day when we put ourselves on the shoulder, fully aware of the tremendous good that our Catholic education institutions are carrying out in our state, but always, always conscious of the enormous challenges that lie ahead and that are the result of the rapid social, economic, and cultural changes taking place amidst us. As Catholic educational institutions, our main concern remains the integral formation of the human person. The person of each individual human being in his or her material and spiritual needs is at the heart of the teaching of Jesus Christ. That is why the promotion of the human person, irrespective of, of creed or class, is the goal of the Catholic educational establishment. The centrality of the human person in the educational project of the Catholic school is what guides and strengthens our mission as educators. My dear friends, in keeping with the general theme of the current pastoral year, he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. The theme chosen for this day's celebration is anointed to serve the poor through education. The church's love for the poor is a part of her constant tradition. This is what the Catechism of the Catholic Church says in number 2,444. And her educational institutions are important instruments in making this love reach the poor in the concreteness of their daily life. In fact, especially in our country and in our state, 
The church has been carrying out this mission with great dedication, particularly for the benefit of the poor, the disadvantaged, and the downtrodden. Our All India Catholic educational policy has this to say in its number 3.9. We assume the responsibility for the education of the poor and the marginalized in our institutions as an essential part of our contribution to build an inclusive and just society. In our Indian context, the marginalized would include the Dalits, tribals, rural poor, slum dwellers, migrants, child laborers, unorganized labor, etc. We make available to them well-qualified teachers who understand their culture and background and are committed to them. By becoming self-empowered, they will then contribute to build a just, humane, and democratic India. It is my earnest wish that our schools and colleges should be houses where the poor are accepted as gifts of love and where all are treated with equality and justice. God loves everyone in the same measure. Our educational institutions must reflect this love, which admits of no discrimination on any grounds. It is only by offering equal opportunities to every student and refraining from making distinctions on the basis of intelligence or any other quality that we shall be able to promote true education and freedom. In this challenging task of education, Jesus stands as a shining model for all of us. He says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. I lay down my life for my sheep. I care specially for those who are wounded and have strayed. As teachers and educators, we share in this shepherding ministry of Jesus to know, to love, to care, to appreciate, to encourage, to be sensitive to the poor, disadvantaged, and less gifted ones. One of the principal motives of our gathering today, this morning, is to celebrate and to recognize the yeoman service that the members of Archdiocese and Board of Education have been rendering to this noble cause of education. We have singled out 161 of these who have completed 30 or more years of dedicated service to this cause. We felicitate them warmly for their great sense of dedication and sacrifice in the service of the education of our children. What they are going to receive today is just a small token of the gratitude our whole society owes to them. On this day, I formulate an ardent appeal that all of you, the awardees of today, may continue to be enthusiastic collaborators of Archidiocesan Board of Education. I thank all those who are involved in the cause of education. And I wish and pray that all of you, especially the awardees of today, will continue to be collaborators of ABE as it forges ahead to fulfill the mission that it has taken up in this beautiful state of Goa. My dear Felicities, continue your sacred mission with unflagging zeal. Along with you, I also salute all the others who together with you are sincerely and selflessly engaged in serving the cause of the education of our young.